This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. If you are looking to stand out from the crowd and build an audience of raving fans for your e-commerce business, then this episode is for you. Our guest today will share with us how to create high converting quizzes that will capture the attention and the contact details of your website visitors in order to build an email list of people that love your brand. I'm joined today by Joe Rigsfeld, who owned, managed, and has been consulting for close to 40 years. He's in e-commerce since 1999 and has helped thousands of business selling on over 40 platforms around the world. He owns e-commerce-optimizer.com and just launched product-listings.ai, which are his personal in-house tools that he's making available to sellers and marketers. He helps sellers become marketers, enabling diversification, expansion, and growth while building out sustainable brands. Hey, Joe, very happy to have you here. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. Thank you. How are Welcome. you doing? Yes, yes, doing very well. I know it's it's a bit late for you. For those who are watching this on YouTube, you'll see Joe, it's in the darkness, but that gives a bit more like the feeling of the wisdom that you will share with us. Because in our chat, you told me so much that we had to stop at some point because I know you are like a, a treasure of experiences and knowledge. So uh, I'm really looking forward for this conversation and will be a special, specifically focused on quizzes, which are a, a topic that it's not often discussed elsewhere, but actually it's a very powerful marketing tool as we will see. So let's start by giving a, the context to people like, so why should e-commerce sellers consider using quizzes because many of them maybe it's the first time they're hearing quizzes well, being a know, being a, a marketing thing i can relate to that feeling because personally i wouldn't take one if i got an email with a quiz in it i i really it's just not my thing but i know it drives a ton of traffic and i know it adds value to a business my personal opinion honestly doesn't matter it's what's right for the business and what's good for the target audience one of the major things value, values out of a quiz is that you're able to build your mailing list. And as an e-commerce seller, your mailing list really is one of the primary assets that you own. Whether you're just down on Amazon or you're not on Amazon and selling elsewhere, you should always be trying to build your list. A good email list that you actually use and market to, typically it'll drive 20, 25% of your sales, which is a lot. And when you're sitting here listening to this, thinking that you don't have a mailing list, that 25% is a lot and, and it can be a lot. And the nice thing about quizzes is it, it depends on the product. You really have to have not every product, a guy's tool chest or a hammer, whatever, may not necessarily work for quiz, but you'd really be surprised. But the thing about quizzes is they generally convert at over 25% really good ones will convert even better than that. Women in particular love quizzes. They really like quizzes. Um, and there's different uses for quizzes. If you have a, a lot of products, you can put a quiz on on the, the first thing somebody sees on the website. It doesn't have to come across as a quiz, but it helps them drill right down to the exact thing that they want. When we have lots of products, we tend to build really sloppy, messy sites because there's so much navigation and stuff to it. People know what they want when they come to your website or they have an idea. The nice thing about a quiz, you can put a quiz on your homepage that just comes up and is like a concierge and walks them through. And the nice thing about quizzes is if you sell orange gadget, orange widgets, blue widgets, and green widgets, the quiz software and stuff that's out there now will segment them into three different lists as they go through and, and take the, the quiz. Quizzes used to just be 
like a Google form kind of a thing. And they're okay, but you really didn't have a lot of options. Well, now it's really different. Now there's all kinds of interaction between the que- the questions. If they answer this question, give them this question. If they answer it that way, then give them this other choice. And, you know, you can lead them right where you want. And you can have a quiz that segments nine different mailing lists, which is nice. Then you're just sending them emails about that product too. So there's, it's really, there's a lot of power to email lists. Yeah. Uh, Again, myself, I wouldn't necessarily fill one out, but I do fill them out when I go to a website and it's, there's like the concierge, there's a car part, an automobile part website that I go to and I don't, they have every every part for every American vehicle ever made. I don't care about all those other vehicles. I care about my vehicle. So when you go to that kind of a site, it just drills you right into what you want. And you can't not get the right part when you go through their system. Because it just walks you right through. What year, what door style, and all all those questions. Um, And service is about making things easy on people. I was in the restaurant business for a long time and in hotels and and fine dining restaurants and stuff. And really the best service is when you can go into a place and you trust them and you can look right at them and say, hey, what's good on the menu today? And they tell you and you trust them and agree with it. Don't make me work. (laughs) I'm coming in into your establishment or I'm coming to your website to look at your products. Don't make me work to find what I want. And that's really the whole thing about quizzes, they add a level of service when you use them as like a concierge on on your website. I think that's a very valuable use of them and people really overlook them. Definitely. definitely. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, very interesting because I think the word quiz spark in some people the idea of something like a, a bit maybe girly or something, right? Mm-hmm. You, you said women uh, like those. So maybe some people that some brands that have certain products might not relate to that. But actually, as you said, a quiz can be just a set of questions, doesn't have to be marked as a quiz itself but it's just Mm -hmm. like a concierge service something that adds up you sell dog food and somebody comes to your site you can just start them right out what's the name of your dog what kind of dog is it do you like natural food or canned food and just by the time you're done you're sending this dog birthday cards yeah yeah it's a fantastic way also to to gather information about your customers that you previously didn't know right so Mm -hmm. you can profile them and you as you said create different lists so you can target uh, your communication better so totally with you on on the power of of quizzes everybody likes to be addressed by a name you send somebody if you send some woman a card a birthday card for her dog she's going to remember you even if she just went to your site and filled out that quiz and never came back or didn't order, it'll get a return visit. From that angle, quizzes are also really good for setting up subscription deals. You bring somebody in for something like a dog food product or something along a product that they have to refill, things like that. You can just walk them right into set, setting up a subscription while they're there. Then yeah. there's wine, there's also wine sites to do that cigar sites when you go to them they'll just walk you right in and start asking you what do you like what don't you like oh well you'll really like this would you like to get this we'll send it to you every month you're not even there for five minutes and it's giving you ideas and then you follow it up with Mm -hmm. the, the trust building and all that stuff but i'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here awesome yeah yeah so we now we agree that it's a great marketing tool Right. So then the next question would be like, how do we come up with quiz ideas that match our brand? And before you start with that, uh, I'd like people to know that as in every episode of this podcast, the guests share some valuable resource that you guys can download. So in this case, Joe, it's sharing with us a very, very valuable list of more than 120 ideas of quizzes that you can run. So go check it out. And also you will find a a list of links 
with real quizzes other brands run. So you can kind of model them. You can get inspiration from them. Remember to check them out, thesellerprocess.com. You can find it in the show notes or in the description of the YouTube video. All right. So let's get back to that. People can download these resources, but Joe, give us like a first idea of the process of how to come up with the right idea for your brand. Thinking of putting together a quiz and coming up with the ideas, most people are probably sitting there thinking to themselves, watching this, thinking, yeah, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? It's actually a lot easier than you think. And this is, I recommend this to everybody. It's a great way to figure it out. And in an hour, you'll know exactly what you what you want, what you're doing. Go to Google, take um, your primary keyword phrase, type that in, a plus sign, and then quiz. And you might have to do different variations of your primary phrase. And what you're looking for is e-commerce sites. You'd be surprised. Uh, there's a lot of companies that do market with quizzes, a lot of them. And I really almost always found companies that are doing quizzes. If you can't find a quiz, if you absolutely cannot find a quiz for your product type, think about shoulder niches. A shoulder niche is it's a, a niche where you don't compete on product, but you share the audience. I sell baseball gloves. You sell baseball uniforms. We share an audience, but we don't compete on product. So if I can't find any quizzes about baseball gloves, I might try baseball uniforms or just baseball. And you'd really be surprised what you find. So then what I the best way to do this is really to, to make a list of 10 sites that have quizzes that are in your niche or in your audience, you share an audience with. And then go to each one of those sites and take the quiz from start to finish. Give them your email or give them a fake email, whatever, because you want to get their email sequence that they send out after as well. By the time you're done, You'll have a really good idea of what kind of quiz you want to do, what kind of questions that you want to do. And you'll get, you'll have 10 different email sequences to look at as well. Uh, companies that have, it's this, and this is a statistic that applies to landing pages too. The more landing pages that you have, the more quizzes that you run exponentially, the higher your conversions from them. So, Companies that have more than 10 double their conversion rate percentages over companies that have less than 10. And it's really, it's worth looking at. Um, Neil Patel makes sorry, jokes sorry, about you're, it. Sorry, you're talking about like 10 different quizzes. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why would 10 different quizzes increase the conversion? You know, it can be the same quiz, even 10 variations of it or 10 different, 10 different um, sites that you put it on. The more landing pages you have, it's putting tentacles out there, that's the more chances people are going to interact with it. We all think we know what works. I think I know everything about writing sales and all this other stuff. And I've learned over and over again that I don't. So it, it's almost a form of A-B testing. Okay. You put it, you, so you go through that process and take the quizzes. You'll really, you'll learn a lot. And you'll see a lot of these quizzes look really professional. And it's because we don't make them ourselves anymore. We use different sites. There's a lot of different sites out there that, that you can, you know, create your quizzes on. The best one that I have found is called Interact. It's tryinteract.com. And I like the logic of it, personally. Being able to segment into different lists, that to me is really important. I like that. That's a great feature of Interact. They have a ton of um, templates as well. So you're not doing anything from scratch, which is nice. With quizzes, what you want to do is you want to try and personalize it as soon as possible. You want to ask them their, their name, even just their first name. What's your name? And then try and use their name in the quiz. At the end of the quiz, ask for their email to, to share the results with them. That's the best way to get the email. Or ask for their email to, to some people feel they have to give a discount. So that's a good time to ask for the email. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people fill that stuff out. You really will. Content ads, quiz ads, run 20% of the cost of product ads. So you can run quiz ads on like Pinterest, 
Instagram, TikTok, all those places for a fraction of what you're going to do, what you're going to run product ads for. So there's a website called Luxy Hair, L-U-X-Y hyphen hair.com. They're a hair extension company. And they're in the list of sites. Actually, I think I, I put a box around their name and there's a separate tab in the spreadsheet with just a, a list of their quizzes. Last time I checked, they had 38 different quizzes and most of them are almost the same quiz. What kind of hair extension should I get? What length hair extension should I get? Wh which hair extension is going to look best? But they also have quizzes. Which Hollywood movie star do you closely match personality wise? You know, they have quizzes like that. I wouldn't be caught dead taking a quiz like that, but lots of people take them. So this company, Luxie Hair, where they were just your typical Amazon seller company up until 2016 when they first started doing quizzes. They are a multi-million dollar powerhouse now. And they do, like I said, they have, last time I checked, they had almost 40 quizzes. You can go also to Google and you can type Luxie Hair plus quiz and it'll give you search results of their, quiz, their quizzes. Um, really, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Find people that are in your category or that you share an audience with and look for their quizzes. They've tried things. They've done some of the A-B testing. You'll see things in there, some things that you like. You'll see some things that you probably will think to yourself, oh, I wouldn't be caught doing that. I won't do that with my company. You know, that's a personal decision, but you'd really be surprised at just some of the goofy things that the, some of the quizzes and stuff that people run. You know, there's just all kinds of things that you wouldn't think of might work for a quiz, you know, but then when you really look at it, people, I'm creative, but I'm not creative like that out of the gate. If I were to just write a quiz from scratch, the third quiz would probably, the third version would probably be something I would actually consider using. The first one I wouldn't use just because I know that's how I am, but it just takes me that long to get where I want. I learned a long time ago that you have to look at what other people are doing. Look at what works. Go to the Facebook ads library and look for quizzes in there. The people that run ads for their quizzes, you're going to find them in their ads. And I mean, it's a great place to start and you're able to find out what's working. If you have a lot of big competitors that have a big presence on social media and stuff, what's working for them? It also sometimes will point out where they're not actually taking advantage of opportunities. I'm old school, been doing this long before Facebook was around when we were doing forum marketing. There are still a lot of forums out there that have really good membership numbers. We're talking hundreds of thousands. And the thing about forums is if it's a forum in your niche, you've got your target audience there. It's just them. You've got very little competition there because people don't think about forum marketing. There's one forum that we advertise, a client we were doing advertising on, we were getting a million impressions for a hundred bucks. We needed two wow. sales to be profitable. I mean, compared to what you spend on PPC, what's a hundred bucks, you know? Um, yeah. And it worked. It really worked. There are a lot of really good forums. Some categories like automotive, all the automotive forums, there's forums for every single car make model out there, but they're all owned by big automotive companies and they charge a ton. But there's a lot of other forums out there that people should be paying attention to. So the way to find forums are to go, it's boardreader.com, B-O-A-R-D reader.com. And that's just a forum search engine. And we always look for forums for, for all of our clients. We always look for forums. It's a good thing to monitor because if somebody's asking a question on a forum about a, a need that you can fill, being the first to answer works.
Okay. Okay. So actually, that's interesting. So you're saying, because I think, you know, most people are not used to go on forums anymore, but actually there's lots of people who still use them. So what would be the way to market this quiz or our, our brand through a forum? Like just listening to the questions and be the first to answer or yeah. you, you do like that's a sponsorship? Sponsorships on forums. Some of the smaller forums, you can get a, a year sponsorship for 500 bucks. And that'll get your banner on the login page. And it will normally get you your own room in the forum to be able to answer, to be able to speak as your business. There's a lot of, so I've had clients that were in the automotive industry for a long time. So a lot of those forums, they charge businesses a lot of money to participate and to have a voice. So what we would do is we would go into each forum and we'd create two members, basically a personal member of myself and a business member for the company and they wouldn't be connected. So I could go in and I could start my own conversations and then go back in after and answer them too. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. And sometimes it's just stirring the pot and getting a little bit of awareness going. They really were just looking for enough money to run their forum. And even now a lot of forums they drive a lot in sales themselves through affiliate things that they do on the site for people to sell like baby products or products moms buy for their kids. There's book, there's a set of books called What to Expect When You're Expecting. I think every pregnant woman gets one of these books. Well, they have giant forums. It's huge. Um, and they charge an arm and a leg. But actually, that forum pays off because there's so many people there. It's that's a really good plate. It's worth, you know, you have to try everything. You have to look at everything, consider everything. You just, you don't know what's going to work sometimes and what's not going to work. I'd, I, I'd love to sit here and tell you that I've been around forever and I know everything. I can just tell you exactly what's going to work and what's not going to work. But I know that's not the case. I know that I need to A, B test everything just as much as everybody else um, because Maybe blue will work better for this group than yellow. You just, you never know. Um, one thing I learned about advertising and ads for quizzes or for content or any of that stuff, make it simple, especially now. Part of, one of the reasons no, there's, we get such low engagement on social posts or social ads is because we can't stop the scroll. That's the first thing you have to do is stop the scroll. And that's really difficult. But I learned a long time ago that the most basic ads sometimes do the best. The best ad I've ever run was a, a yellow background with black text that just said, make yourself the priority. And we targeted, it was a woman's product. We targeted women, English speaking, younger women. And we got a ton of engagement on that. It's something that somebody that read it could immediately shake their heads and say, yes, yeah, that, that makes sense. That's something I want to do. Make my, make yourself the priority. We really got a ton of engagement on that for four cents a click. It was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. And so what I learned was start an ad like that, start an ad like that, run it, get 2000 clicks on it. That's kind of Facebook's point of where they kind of know who to show it to and then start a b testing it and adding different things to it then after 2000 clicks then we added uh, actually the brand name to it and then we got more clicks then we added we added the product to it and what i learned doing this is it keeps your cost down because um, initially those first 2000 clicks are going to determine your long range cost on that ad and when you're averaging three cents a click to begin with, that we save that ad and all of our ads will start with that as a base. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very interesting, actually. But I'm captivated by what you mentioned before that the product ad, the quiz ads are higher converting than the product ads, which is very interesting because it's kind of counterintuitive. So when you're saying it, they're converting better, do you mean like 
sales conversion, like how much sales quiz converts into, no, or it's no, just uh, the with email? A, with, with a quiz ad, the conversion is the email. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The, the, the conversion is the email. Then from there, depending on the quiz, then from there, you want to follow up. Just it depends on what the quiz is. For example, Luxy Hair. If I was Luxy Hair and I was doing a quiz about what Hollywood personality do you match up with the best, how do I sell them hair extensions at the end of that quiz? On the thank you page, say, hey, we sell hair extensions. Who cares? You know, you have to have a segue. What I would do in that case, that's a little more difficult, but what I would do in that case is I would send them several follow-up emails and I'd ease the company. This company sponsored this quiz. So you always want to have the quizzes sponsored by your company. Brand awareness, getting your name in front of them. The more you can get your name in front of people, the more they become aware of who you are and then build trust with them. I might have a product that I know you need, but you don't know you need it yet. So you bump into my brand with quizzes or you see different things that we're doing online or you see an influencer, you know, talking about my product. You might not know my product yet or be ready to buy, but you start to hear my brand name. Then when you are ready to buy, the whole goal of it is brand awareness that you see my brand name in the search results and you click or you've interacted with my content several times and you trust my, you know, you trust me because we've provided you with helpful content, whatever the purpose of the content was, provided you tips or help, things that you're searching for. So something that I'm real big on, I personally, I don't like paid ads, PPC. I mean, that can be the death of you. And it is for a lot of sellers. Really what sellers should be focused on, especially now with Amazon fees, is how can I drive my cost down? How do I offset the high cost of fees on Amazon? And quizzes are one way to do that. Because you can, well, with Amazon, you have the attribution link. Amazon rewards off-site traffic as well as it does PPC traffic from on Amazon. And if you use the attribution link, they will reimburse you it's about 10 percent of the sale so you can use that 10 percent to pay for driving that traffic to me it's a no-brainer because that's just something that i've always done i was in e-commerce before we had ppc so we had to find other ways of doing things and even on amazon ppc on amazon didn't start until 2006 maybe 2007 uh, it started quite a bit after google ads and stuff on how did you rank number one? You listed on Amazon and you looked at the five people that were ranking better than you and you targeted them and you studied them and you improved your listing so it was better than theirs. And you just kind of marched your way up to, to rank first and you drove traffic. And that's really what you need more than one stream of traffic. Um, when you only have one stream of traffic like PPC or whatever you happen to be using, if something happens to that stream, you're screwed. Um, and that's a really bad place to be. That's a bad position to be in as a seller. I'm sure you probably have a lot of Amazon sellers that listen to your podcast, and I'm sure they're all kind of shaking their head, <laughs> thinking, yeah, I, I got suspended for a day or I got suspended for a week. Or Unfortunately, on Amazon, it's not if, it's when. It happens to almost everybody sooner or later. It's a bad place to be, because especially if you have employees and, fa and whose families also rely on that paycheck. It's bad enough it hurts you. But if you've got 10 employees with their 10 families and now nobody's getting a paycheck because of this. And I have a love-hate relationship with Amazon because of stuff like that, because it's just it's bad business. It's unprofessional on their part, but they don't care. And you have to do what you have. You have to protect yourself. So really, quizzes are a really good way of building uh, a presence off of Amazon, building a name, and driving your own traffic. If you could, even if you only drove 20% of your own traffic, that's still a lot. And Amazon rewards off-site traffic with ranking improvements. So if you have, you're getting ranking improvements from your off-site traffic that you're driving to Amazon, Theoretically, you could have 
enough sales on Amazon to build a moat that an Amazon only seller can't cross because they can't get enough. They can't match the sales that you're doing because they're not using that off Amazon um, traffic source. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. And it's such a great discovery, this one of quizzes to me, because I, I totally like understand it logically, but I never really delved into it. So thank you for bringing this up. I'm very happy I discovered this part of marketing. And I'm sure lots of people will be happy to also give it a try. So we share lots of insights here. We're running out of time now. So obviously it's a very complex world. People can get started thanks to this first inputs that we're sharing. Then also thanks to the materials that you're sharing. So guys, remember that you can find over hundreds of ideas of quizzes that you can run. So to get inspiration, you will find it in the show notes of this episode at thesellerprocess.com or in the YouTube video description. Before we close, Joe, if people might be interested in working with you or learn more about quizzes and all the other things you're experts on in terms of uh, e-commerce marketing, how can they reach out? What can you help them with? Just feel free to share your your contact. Um. My website, my primary website is ecommerce-optimizer.com. Um, and what I do is I don't sell. I stopped selling several years ago. Um, I have some Fortune 500 clients and they you can't compete. They're not going to hire you if you sell. They want people that are focused on them, not themselves. Um, so I don't sell anymore. Um, I have sold quite a bit in the past though, but I work with sellers. I, I prefer to work with sellers that want to diversify and want to do more than just Amazon because I'm a marketer and to as a seller you look at things a certain way as a marketer that sells products you learn skills that are applicable for many different categories that apply to many different categories it's just a different world the things that Amazon never talks about that people don't think work with Amazon that actually work really well. Um, targeting your competitor's YouTube videos. You can put in the, the little ad at the beginning of a YouTube video. You can target specific videos with your own ad for your product and put it right on your competitor's video. It, there's so many different things that people can do with that. So I work with a lot of sellers. We pre-market products. I don't Personally, I don't believe in discounts and rebates. I try and shy away from them. I believe in adding value, building value into products. We launch with influencers. Pretty much primarily, we launch with influencers. We'll, we'll set up a month's worth of influencers, a shout out every day for the first 10 days and every other day for the rest of the month to drive traffic. User generated content is really big. TikTok is really big. I don't trust big corporations. I mean, if you're an Amazon seller, you've learned consumers don't trust big corporations either. They trust people that look like themselves, that sound like themselves, that they can relate to, that they can visualize themselves using that, being that person. Um, user generated content is really, really good for driving traffic. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of influencers out there that will, will pitch your quizzes to people even because they're excited about it. It's an interesting world. It no, really is. It e is. I really like what I do. Uh, E-commerce is fun. So one of the things that I'm in the middle of doing right now is I've pretty much automated. Um, I used to have a giant agency and I don't anymore and I'm glad I don't, but I've automated a lot of the things, the research and the, the heavy lifting stuff that I do. And I've had these tools for several years myself. And I'm going to make them available, actually getting ready to launch a website in the next few days. Um, and it'll be productlistings.ai. And they're machine learning tools, marketing tools that use AI to manage it. So AI does not have access to everything that people think it does. If you ask AI for low competition, high converting keywords, it's going to guess. It, it, if you ask it to optimize your listing, if you're not telling it who your target audience is, and I mean, getting very detailed with it, it's going to guess. All, all of these tools that I have, 
start with data. It starts with your data. It starts with data that we're pulling off the internet. I don't every. I try to do. I try to only do things deliberately. I used to guess. We all do. I used to guess about lots of things, but there's a lot of data out there. Sellers have a lot of information. One of the tools that I'm going to be putting up very soon is how to will take brand analytics and your PPC reports, and it'll tell you what your comp- competitors are paying on their bids and what they're and where they're getting their sales from so that you can budget your PPC. You can decide what words you, you can afford to spend money on, what words you probably want to stay away from. There's tons of data out there and data is very overwhelming because you don't deposit data in the bank, you deposit sales in the bank. And there's lots of tools out there that put all these numbers in front of you that just are very overwhelming for a new server. So I try to take all that out of it. These tools give you actionable uh, strategies. I leave all the the details are there if you're one of those people that want to look at them, but you don't need to because there's action. So I have a, a tool that we use to create product-specific buyer personas in the buyer's own words. So I could take your product and I can develop buyer personas based on your product and your competitor's products. And the buyer persona is the voice of your buyer, not something that we made up, not something that AI made up, but actually their words. And And it develops between 40 and 50 different data points that then we turn around and take that. And that's basically the input for most of the other tools. We build our product listings off of that. So the product listing on Amazon is basically buyers talking to them, t- telling, talking to themselves. And it, it just works. Like I said, I'd love to say that I know everything, but I don't. And the key to listings is to be able to speak and create copy that resonates with your buyer excellent copy that touches them and and speaks to them. It makes up for bad website, makes up for bad pictures. Great copy motivates people. The goal of your copy should be that when I look at that listing, I'm going to look at it and say, wow, look, they have this, but those other guys don't have it. And they have this. I want this. I want this now. Bing, before they even scroll down to look at the fake reviews or anything like that, it's you want to be able to create copy that motivates the action that you want. And by when you do it, if you're a buyer and you're talking to me as a buyer, um, you're going to say things that I want to hear because you're like me, as opposed to I'm selling some product that women buy. I've written thousands of listings over the years and something somebody's taught me in the last couple of years is I don't know a thing about selling products to women, but they value is different than what, what men value. Having a listing that's in the words of uh, other women and repeats those, the things that they need to hear that triggers the purchase really works. So that's something I've been working on for a year and I'll have that site up here shortly, but I'm on a lot. I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. I'm on Reddit as well. I like to, to share what I know with people and give advice. So I'm pretty easy to find, but e-commerce hyphen optimizer is the easiest way. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. I'm sure we can talk endlessly about all this, the strategies and tactics. You have really a huge knowledge and experience about this. So thank you very much again for sharing today with us about quizzes. And I'm sure we can create many more episodes about different strategies. Thank you again, Joe. Yeah. So guys, remember the key to success is to emulate the best. So take home the insights and strategies and tactics that Joe just shared with us and uh, apply to your business and let us know the results. Joe, it's also there and to help you with succeeding on Amazon and in e-commerce. All right. I hope you guys like the content today and I hope you have a productive week and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Hey, entrepreneurs, I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview. 
If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook, where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less, optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks, and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business. Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you. And leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business. And have a productive week.